Josh Frick, going back onto your journey, so can you go really into a bit of detail about the depths of despair that you got into? Sure, yeah. Um, in the book, for the sake of family and friends, um, there is obviously I don't put names in, and I, I try to omit some detail, and that's not because I don't want to talk about it. It's just just because I don't want to cause anybody any pain and hurt. But um, yeah, in my teens, I was I was violent. Um, I probably I, I can only guess, but I probably had over a hundred fights in this on the streets. But regularly, yeah, really fighting. If I'd have known, I'd have avoided you like the plague. Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I was violent and. I took recreational drugs that developed into more than that and it became a coping mechanism, alcohol and drugs. Yeah. Every night and took drugs regularly. Yeah. Um, and consequently affected my health. I didn't sleep properly. I wasn't thinking well. Um, and I had some very low points. I went through, you can call it, uh, the shift to spiritual awakening, nervous breakdown. Um, but there came a point in my life where I realised that... Um, it was time to change and that I couldn't carry on in the mode I was in and that uh, I had this big ego yeah. role, and I had to sort of I don't think anybody ever really removes all their ego but you can dissolve it and reduce it drastically I think I think you know we talk about lot, ego a lot in the spiritual world but I think there has to be an element of ego to, to survive on this all, planet all individual yeah it's going to be but um, yeah you certainly don't need I, I was the problem is in this country the programming we get, young men were programmed that men should be tough, don't be so yeah. that you're a coward, that it's all macho and men don't express themselves. They don't, they're not, it's not that they aren't as creative, but they don't paint and write poetry. Because they're seen as art. feminine. Yes. And yeah. that's a big problem because that's directly why there's so many suicides under <laughs> under 14 years in this um, in this country. It's the biggest killer. It is, is. And, 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 and men. And many friends. Yeah. Who, one who I found out very recently who've uh, taken their own life. Now, the difference between two people, yeah. one in ecstasy and one that's experiencing hell, yeah. stood next to each other in the exact same external environment is simply the way they're thinking. Well, yeah, completely. Now, so correct thought can mean yeah. your life is bliss on a daily basis, you're fully present and living in the moment, or it can mean that you're, you're experiencing hell. Yeah. And I've even said in my talks, I say that, correct thought your mind is more important than food and people say well, you're crazy i'm not you can go several days without eating food and you'll be okay yeah if your mind isn't operating correctly where you become the negative thoughts grow and expand yeah you can experience a state where either you're very um you're not fully present so you can have a bad accident yeah when you're driving we've all driven to work and then you get there and you think i don't remember the journey yeah i'm so busy you're not even in the car yeah but even worse than that you, can, you might not make it through the day because you think it seems extreme, but it happens because people are killing themselves. Yeah. Where, where you have negative thought patterns and you won't see another sunset. So yeah. it can all be fixed, but it's really important that um, everybody's given these tools so that they can slow down the busy mind. Because the material world, you'll find pleasure there, whether it's computer games, shopping, alcohol, drugs, you'll find pleasure there. It's temporary, it's transient. Yeah. When you learn to meditate and develop inner peace, you'll bring your attention inwards. And you start to focus on your true self, yeah. this egoless state. Yeah. And when you do that, you can experience bliss and joy. Bliss and joy are generated internally, they come from inside, the, it is your natural state. And when you learn to quiet the mind, you'll experience a state of bliss and joy. What do you think, Mickey, about having Patrick in to do some meditation classes on the, in, on the radio with us all? Yeah, why not? Why not do uh, some meditation classes? Well, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Imagine how many people we could reach. Well, I'm just thinking we could do mindfulness with the uh, McBride on the on the red. That would be quite a good show, wouldn't it? Mm. Mindfulness for McBride. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've asked me twice. I'll, I'll tell yeah, you we can. Definitely. We'll speak to. Uh, we'll speak to. Sue, uh, is it Sue? My mine's gone blank. Who? Chris and Jill. Jill, not Sue. Jill. She knows <laughs> I know her name. It's all better holiday, man. It's all gone. I've been attempting through one-on-one -on -one classes, and then classes where I've had up to fifty people, and then doing workshops that are three or four hours long. And now through the medium of obviously I'm an author and I've written a book. Yeah. Um, I'm attempting to reach as many people as possible, and I can show that number one, if I can do it, anybody can. If you see the state that my life was in and see where I'm up to now, yeah, it's not perfect. You yeah. Know? Um, I just go through it's perfect it. imperfection in progress kelly that's exactly right <laughs> yes. but also um through the medium of radio potentially reach a lot of people and meditation i always say in the back of my book it says you've got to try the 10 to find the two 
if you're not open to change, if you've defined yourself, if you've got edges and you're not willing to get outside your comfort zone and grow and do new things, yeah. you're not going to find the things that find peace for you. Now, yeah. that may be meditation. There are lots of other ways to do it and they're all wonderful. It's whatever works for you. But meditation is the only surefire, guaranteed way I know that if somebody wants change and is willing to put in a little bit of work yeah but it works every time and how long does it take to you know from your experience patrick um because i you know i've dabbled in and out of meditation yeah. so sometimes I've, I've been on the uh harem what's the uh where you transmendental i went and did the course meditation. yeah and I've, i practice that daily as well oh you yeah. practice that yeah, so i do lots of different kinds of oh do you so I, I, I meditate every morning every night and then i also teach meditation so right. i can meditate eight or ten times a day wow you know, gosh meditate. Often. Don't be worrying, listeners. We're not expecting you to do that. No, uh, not yet. Make it part <laughs> of your, you know, 10, 15 you know, minutes, no yeah, pressure. You know, when you when you start, ideally, you've got to do it at least once a day, ideally twice, and you're looking at you yeah. know, a good starting point, it's 10 minutes. Yeah. And those 10 minutes, you're just going to relax. And what happens when you meditate as well is when your mind becomes peaceful yeah. and you remove the thoughts, your thoughts create your feelings and your physicality. So when you quiet your mind, you release tension out of your body. Yeah. And you sleep better, you're more relaxed, yeah. you're more focused, you can concentrate, you feel good. You're a better human being. You operate as a better human being when you're peaceful. Yeah. yeah. No. So I think, Nikki, I think we're going to love this, aren't we? Yeah. We might I'm change your name to Meditation Mickey. Yeah. Meditation Mickey? Oh. <laughs> too long now. <laughs> No, <laughs> mystical do for me. Mystical, no, but uh, you are definitely mystical, Mickey, but just, just just having fun with you there, Mickey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Um, so, so, yeah, so you hit rock bottom. Yeah. You got into meditation. Yeah. Uh, what led you to, so what's that? So A lot of alignment and synchronicity. Okay. Yeah, did I, a teacher, did someone appear in your life or? Um, once I decided that I had to change, I wanted to change, yeah. I withdrew from society for a while and became quite segre- um A bit like a recluse. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, and I realised that there had to be a better way than drinking and drugs to... Um, for a coping mechanism and once I started to meditate I found that all the things in my life that were negative started to dissolve and and let go naturally without any effort everything just started to did friendships change and the circle of people that you hung around with it's not that I'm I'm not friends with a lot of people that I used to knock around with but I I don't frequent pubs I don't watch football I don't watch television yeah Um, all the things that our commonalities were removed. Yeah. So I'm still in touch with some of those people. Yeah. But i now got a whole new batch of friends as well. Yeah. Uh, a spiritual community, if you will, from yeah. various venues that I've taught at. Um, so now my friends are all Reiki masters. My partner's a shamanic healer. Yeah. Um, my friends are mediums. Yeah. You know, I, 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 did, I operate, I meet people that are excited to be alive and that are all channeling. They've got universal energy flowing through them at 100 miles an hour. Love it. Um, very lucky. Uh, it's funny because uh, we'll talk about mediums. I went to see a medium, Mickey, on Tuesday. Did you? A lady called Ali over in Wigan. And, um, oh, uh, my was dad... She, trans- she was amazing, Mickey. Yeah. Um, my dad transitioned two years, three years ago in September, yeah. suicide. Yeah. And, um... Or unfortunately, I wish my dad had known about meditation at that stage in his yeah. journey. But he's where he's meant to be. And, yeah, she brought him through. It was amazing. And I just cried the whole time, but it was just amazing. Wow. Yeah, really wow. amazing. What, what we talked about earlier, Kelly, which you know from uh, your journey, which has been different to mine, but there's some similarities, is that... Um, as a Buddhist, and Buddh- Buddhism is optional, by the way. The meditation comes as a separate package. Yeah. I don't think you have to be a Buddhist. You certainly don't. And I find it goes hand in hand. But, yeah. Uh, is that nobody ever dies. Yeah. In the Buddhist tradition, nobody ever dies. And when so you true. start to think like that, yeah. it makes the trans- transition a lot easier, the process a lot easier. Yeah. And I still regularly experience the energy of the people that I love that have passed away. Yeah. Especially when I go off the clock I go quiet and I'm in nature. Yeah. There are other ways, but when you become fully present in the moment and yeah. you allow it, the yeah. universe will you'll see signposts everywhere. But it's comes, magical, isn't it? Yeah, we were saying yeah. that this morning, it becomes magical. Yeah. Um, right, well, we'll play another song. We're going to play The Sunshine After the Rain because this is very relevant to where you're at now on your journey. Yes. And, uh, and when we come back, um, yeah, I'd love to tell people how your life really changed. And, and obviously the writing of your book and, yeah. and what, what, you, what your dreams and aspirations are for the book and, and obviously you've touched on changing the world. Yeah. And uh, not 
<laughs> not, not a big aspiration. It sounds huge, but actually, changing the world starts by changing yourself. Yeah. Because, have I got a minute? Of course you have, please. All right. Um, until we all become enlightened beings, we're affected by our environment. Now, if you're an enlightened being, in theory, I can go and sit in the middle of a mo- main road and meditate, as long as I don't get run over. Um, but we're not there. We're not. So what happens is if you put uh, a person in a room with 100 people laughing and happy, they will experience joy. If you put somebody in a war zone, they will be traumatised because they'll see people with limbs blown off and things like this. So you're affected by your environment. Now, your environment is made up of the people and your surroundings, so you are part of my environment now, Kelly, and you're part of my environment, Mickey. Now, what I've learned is if you're happy... I'm happy. If I'm surrounded by peace and love, I'm going to be really happy. I'm going to feel good. It's positive energy. What I've also learned is that in order for that to be a reality, I have to generate the positive energy from within. When I feel good and I give that to everybody around me, I get it back. When you shine, the universe is just a big cosmic mirror and you get it all back. So changing the world sounds like a massive aspiration, but in reality, all we have to do, all anybody has to do, is grasp the concept that the only thing they have to change, the only thing they have to master, in a mastery, is yourself. So each person, you've got one job to do while you're here, while you're in this spacesuit, in this realm, and that is to to shine, to follow your dharma, to give out peace and love, to become the best you can be, yeah. to give, to care, to love. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to connect you, um, Patrick, to a good friend of mine, Mick. You might be listening today, Mick Collins, he featured in the book, but it's funny because you touched on enlightenment, and I've got a bit of a bugbear with the word enlightenment. Mm-hmm. I re- you know, I'm being open and honest because yeah, yeah, this you know what is enlightenment and mm. i think in the spiritual community mm. it's gone sometimes it's like everyone's looking for enlightenment and, yeah. and actually you know what and i think it, and yeah. this is well, this is me positive to princess talking about it being a bit airy fairy but but i understand what you're saying yeah. it's just that i think it's just getting to that stage where we can just love ourselves and each yeah. other this is my whole point in the back of the book it's no good if there's five of us enlightened and the rest are suffering. What we want is everybody on uh, a plane where the, they experience joy and bliss in their daily life. That's what we're after. And enlightenment, there's very few people that reach enlightenment in this realm. And when you do reach enlightenment, um, a lot of people pursue enlightenment. And that's not the idea. What we've got to remember is if you're in a good place and you're moving towards a bad place, it doesn't feel good. If you're in a bad place and you're towards a good place, it feels great. So it doesn't matter where you are, it's about the direction you're heading in the journey. It's always about the journey. You might not reach enlightenment, you might strive for it, but it's the path. It's moving in the direction. Definitely. And I think as well as well, you know, if we look at, you know, if we look at the world as it is, if we are all, you know, sat, and I agree with you, the meditation and, and it's so... But also it's that love in action as well. And that's what Mick yeah. talks about. We get yeah. to... St- and we're all becoming like positivity activists at some degree to, to bring about change yeah. in the world, you know, because we've got kids starving, we've got yeah. we've got people suffering. And it uh, and, and actually, yes, um, but... I, so if we, the whole world got to that stage, you wouldn't have no. people in su- well, suffering. If everybody developed inner peace yeah. tonight... Yeah. Uh, all wars would cease. Yeah. Tomorrow. Starvation would cease. Everything would, the world would start to heal, right? Simply yeah. Because if you're in a place of peace and love, yeah. and that's what you're generating inside, yeah. you can't get angry. Yeah. You won't get frustrated. You will initially because there's going to be fluctuations up to yeah. down and you're, you're moving towards something. There's always going to be um, variations and fluctuations. But it's about the general direction you're heading in. <coughs> and if all of us could develop inner peace... Sorry, Mickey. The following day... Um, there would be no war. If I'm full of love and peace, I cannot wish you malice. I can't, I don't want to harm you. Yeah. All I want to do is make you smile. Yeah. And we've got to learn that if we generate this internally, um, it will change it the will, world. It will, we'll it'll reverberate an, out. Call a, an evolution of consciousness where yeah. we can actually lift the vibration of this planet yeah. and start to operate in harmony with natural law and follow our true nature which is not what we're doing at the minute yeah so that there we go for our listeners we're now gonna have the sunshine after the rain (laughs) 